Hi, I'm Rebecca, and welcome to this class on the present continuous tense, which is also called the present progressive tense. Now, this class is part of the Ingvid series on English verb tenses. So, the present continuous tense is a basic tense. It's usually one of the first tenses that you start to learn when you start studying English. However, it doesn't exist in every language and it might not exist in your language. So it's possible to make mistakes very easily and it's a basic tense, so we really don't want to make those kind of mistakes. So just stay with me. We're going to go through it step by step. I'll show you exactly how to use it. We'll do lots of practice together and you will understand and be able to use it. So are you ready? Let's start. So there are two basic tenses first to start to talk about the present. They are the present simple and the present continuous. Okay, we know it has two names. I'm just going to use one name. So what's the difference? Let's look at some examples in each of these tenses. So in the present simple, I would say, I work. In the present continuous, I would say, I am working. So what is the difference between these two? I am working talks about something that's happening right now. For example, I am teaching, you are watching, you are listening, right? Or it can also talk about something temporary, like you're watching this lesson, this moment, but also for a short time. Short is a general idea, okay? So it could be something that's happening now or something temporary. However, we use I work and present simple to talk about things that are true in general. I work in this company, but I am working now. Or I work in this company, but I'm not working now. I'm having lunch. See the difference? Okay. We also use present simple to talk about things that are more permanent, like your job, right? You don't change your job usually every day. It's more or less permanent, where you work, where you live. This is more permanent and general, present simple, and this is more temporary and now. So that's the basic overview and the basic idea. And how do we actually form this tense? We form it by using the subject, like I, you, we, they, he, she, it, plus the verb to be, plus the verb, plus ing. Let's look at an example. I am working. So we have the subject and the verb to be, and each form of the verb to be. I am working. You are working. We are working. They are working. He is working. She is working. It's working. Okay? The computer, the air conditioner, whatever. Okay? So that's the basic overview of this tense. Now let's look at when we use the present continuous tense. So as we saw earlier, we can definitely use it to talk about something that's happening right now. For example, the baby is sleeping. Don't make noise. Okay. Or for example, oh, it's raining outside. All right. So those are examples of something happening right now. We can also use this tense to talk about something that's happening around now. For example, he is writing a book. So he might not be writing it this minute, but he's writing it around now. We don't know how long it'll take, but it's happening around this time. So we can use it in that context. For example, we could also say he's working on a project. Maybe the project is going to take one week and maybe it'll take one year or 10 years. We don't know, but it's happening around now. Okay. Next, we can also use it to talk about something temporary. Not something that happens all the time, but something temporary. For example, that book, 
right? When we don't know, maybe it's going to take him three years to write the book. But it, in his mind, it's not something that's going to last forever. It's something temporary, okay? So this is more what how you look at what is happening. Or this example, something temporary. We are staying at a hotel. We live in our home, that's permanent, but right now, while we're in this city, while we're traveling, we are staying at a hotel. That's something temporary. Okay, next. We can also use it to talk about a trend. A trend is something that's changing, okay? Something that's developing. For example, the prices of homes are increasing. Let's say the prices were here and now the prices are going up. So we can say the prices are increasing. Some sort of changes that are happening. And we can also talk about a trend in terms of something that's popular. Often we talk about things, uh, fashion trends, for example, right? People are wearing a certain color. People are wearing bright colors this summer. Or people are wearing certain kinds of shoes. So we can talk about trends using this present continuous tense, all right? So those are the basic ways in which we use this tense, but I just want to let you know that there are also two slightly more advanced ways in which we can use this tense. So let's look at what they are. The first one is to talk about some kind of repeated action, but it's usually something negative. So we're using it to kind of come when we want to complain about something. For example, if you say, they're always making noise, that's a negative remark, right? So we can use always in this context to, with the present continuous tense. Usually, we use words like always, never, sometimes, um, frequently, and so on to talk about present simple, something that's true in general. For example, they always help us, or just to talk about facts. But when you're talking about something negative, then very often we can use this present continuous tense. But that's a slightly more advanced way to use it, so don't worry about it too much. But you might hear people using it that way. And another point, I know that I said this is called the present continuous, and it talks about the present, not the past, not the future, the present. However, sometimes we can actually use it to talk about the future, but only in a special way. So let's look at what that is. If I say, she is flying to Mexico next week. Now, if I didn't say next week, if I only said she's flying to Mexico, what does it mean? It's happening right now. So when I want to use this tense to talk about the future, I have to say something like this. I have to say next week, tomorrow, next summer, next year. I have to give it some kind of time in the future. And then you can use present continuous for the future in a slightly more advanced way. Okay? So those are the basic ways in which we use this tense. Now let's look at when not to use the present continuous tense. So first of all, everything here, all these examples, these are all wrong, okay? And we're going to understand why. So we cannot use the present continuous tense to talk about any permanent actions or activities. For example, for most people, where they live, where they work, these are more or less permanent. They don't change every day. They're not temporary, right? So. If I live in Canada all the time, then it would be wrong to say I am living in Canada. That would only be okay if it was something temporary. Similarly, if I work at ABC Company and that's my permanent job, it would be wrong to say I am working at ABC Company. I would need to say I work at ABC Company. That would be a different tense, the present simple tense. And similarly here, if I live in Canada, I need to say I live in Canada and not I am living, because that would be temporary. So that's the most 
common kind of mistake that people make, so be really careful of that. Similarly, we have stative verbs. This is another area that you have to be really careful about. Why? Because in English, there are two kinds of verbs, action verbs and what are called stative verbs. So, action verbs are your normal verbs that you know most of the time, like work, run, play, jump, okay? And stative verbs describe a state or a condition. It could be a mental state. It could be an emotional state, okay? And with this tense, we cannot use stative verbs. And in fact, in any continuous tense in English, you cannot use stative verbs. Let me give you some examples of stative verbs. For example, it would be wrong to say, I am understanding English. No, you cannot say that because understand is a stative verb to do with your mind. So it's wrong to say that, okay? This is all wrong. <laughs> okay, it would be wrong to say, we are liking this show. Liking is wrong because like is a stative verb. So we would need to say, we like this show. We, I understand English, okay? Similarly here, when you talk about, when you talk about verbs that refer to what you own, what you possess, what you have, we cannot use those verbs in the stative form with this tense. So it would be wrong to say, they are having a car. You would need to say, they have a car. Similarly, um, again, there's a, a long list of stative verbs, but the verb need and the verb want are very common verbs, which are usually stative verbs, and therefore you can't use them in this tense. So it would be wrong to say, are you needing help? You would need to say, do you need help? Okay, so whether you have learned the present simple or not, don't worry right now, just understand that with present continuous, you cannot use stative verbs. So everything here is wrong. Now let's look at how we form the present continuous tense. Let's start by looking at a sample sentence. I am working. So we saw that there are three parts. I, which is the subject, am, in this case, which is a form of the verb to be. Then we have the verb work, right? And then we have ing, all right? So in order to use this tense correctly, you need to know two things. You need to be sure that you know the verb to be perfectly, and then you need to know how to add the verb plus ing and any changes you need to make in spelling. So, what I've done is I've divided this lesson first into just looking at the verb to be, to make sure that you're using it correctly, because if you have mistakes in the verb to be, this central part, then you will make mistakes in this tense. But if you've got it right, then you'll be absolutely fine. So let's just take a minute to review the verb to be, all right? And then we'll move on to the next part. So in a positive sentence, it would be I am. You are. We are. They are. He is. She is. It is. Now, when we say the verb to be, the verb to be is one of the most common verbs, but it is used in two ways. One is by itself. For example, I can say, I am a teacher. Or we can also use the verb to be as a helping verb as it's being used in this tense. Then I could say, I am teaching. Now, the verb to be became a helping verb. But one way or the other, whether I'm using the verb to be by itself or I'm using it in this context, then 
I still need to know exactly how to use the verb to be. So now, let's look at the negative. I am not. You are not. We are not. They are not. What do you notice? We're just adding not, right? Let's do it a little bit more. He is not. She is not. It is not. Okay? Right now, don't worry about this last part. We're going to add that soon. Okay? Let's just get this part right. The verb to be. All right? Next, let's look at when we have the verb to be in a question or in our tense. So what do we do? Instead of saying, I am, we say, am I? If you had the verb after that, you would say, am I working? And so on. But we'll look at that in a minute. Right now, just master this part. It's a critical part of understanding and using this tense correctly. Are you? Are we? Are they? Right? The same at the bottom here. Is he? Is she? Is it? All right? So, make sure that you can use the verb to be so that you can use the present continuous tense correctly. Now let's look at how we form the full present continuous tense. You already know the verb to be. Now we'll say a positive sentence, a negative sentence, and a question. So you can repeat after me. It will be very good practice to also hear the correct form. I am working. You are working. We are working. They are working. He is working. She is working. It is working. Okay, got that? Good. For the negative, it's very easy. You just add not before the verb plus the ing. So, not working, right? You're not working. He is not working. They are not working. Like that. Okay? It's very simple. Just take this and add not working. Now, for the question, we have to reverse the order. So instead of saying I am, we say am I. Right? Just like with the verb to be, same thing. That's why I told you the verb to be is so important. It's part of this tense. So, repeat after me the questions. Am I working today? Are you working? Are we working? Are they working? Is he working? Is she working? Is it working? So that's your basic question form. Now remember, you can always add a question word before that. For example, you could say, when are you working? Where are you working? How long are you working? But what's important, what's important if you do that is to keep this same order. Keep your question order. Don't turn it back into a sentence. Just add the question word like when or how long or why or something like that, and keep this structure. When are you working? Where are you working? Why are you working? And so on. Okay? And that's how you form the present continuous tense. Now let's look at how we use contractions in the present continuous tense. So in English, sometimes, instead of saying, for example, I am learning, we shorten it or contract it and say, I'm learning. So why do we do that? Usually, it's faster, it's easier, and we use it a lot in informal conversation and also in informal writing. We do not usually use contractions like these in formal business writing or in academic writing, but we use them a lot on an everyday basis. So let's see how to spell them and how to pronounce them. 
So I am becomes I'm. What happened here? We took away the A and we put an apostrophe where we took away the letter and we joined those two words. I'm. You are becomes your. We are becomes we're. They are becomes there. He is becomes he's. She is she's. And it is <clears throat> it's. Okay? All right. So let's say a sentence, a really short sentence with these contractions. So you can learn how to say them easily and naturally. I'm learning. You're learning. We're learning. They're learning. He's learning. She's learning. It's learning. Okay? Good. Now, we can do the same thing when it's negative. So, instead of saying, I am not, we can shorten it in one way only. We can say, I'm not. So, basically, we just took the I'm and we added not. All right? So, we just got rid of this and then we joined these two. Okay? Sorry, we didn't join them, but we use them one after the other. Okay? I'm not. So let's say a sentence. I'm not watching. Are you watching TV? No, you can put it off. I'm not watching. Okay? Next. You are not becomes what? There are two possibilities here. First, let's just add not. So you are not can become you're not. We're not, they're not, or you are not can be contracted in a different way. Here, we are just going to take away the O here and put an apostrophe and combine these two. What we did here is we took this one and we got rid of this letter and combined this one. So, let's look at it for a second. You are not here became you're not. We contracted these two words. You are not here. We got rid of the O and we joined these two words. Are not. So the other possibility is you aren't. Say it after me. You aren't watching. We aren't watching. They aren't watching. Okay, very good. The same here. He is not can become he's not, right? We got rid of this one. She's not. It's not. Or we can get rid of the O here and join this and we can say he isn't. She isn't watching. It isn't watching. So that's how we spell and pronounce the contractions. Now let's look at some spelling changes we need to make to the verb when we're using the present continuous tense. So with all of the verbs, you need to add ing. And to most of the verbs, that's all you need to do. You just need to add ing. For example, eat becomes eating, walk, walking, right? All we did was add that ing. But with some verbs, you have to make a few small other changes. For verbs ending in e, we need to drop the e and then add ing. For example, use becomes using. So we dropped or canceled this e and added ing. Take becomes taking. Again, we dropped or canceled the E. All right? Good. 
For verbs ending in IE, we need to drop the IE and add Y and then add the ING. For example, lie, right? L I E, cancel I E, add Y and then I N G, lying. Tie becomes tying. Okay, that's it. Now, for some verbs ending in a C V C pattern, we have to double the last letter. What is that CVC? C stands for consonant, V for vowel, and then C again for consonant. A vowel in English is A, E, I, O, or U, and a consonant is any other letter. So, what you do is you look at the verb, all right? You uh, look at the verb from the end, it will be easier. And if it follows that pattern, right? C, the P is a consonant, the A is a vowel, and then the L is a consonant. So if it follows that pattern, C, V, C, then double that last letter. Now, there are some special circumstances. It doesn't always apply, but it often applies. There are patterns in English spelling, and sometimes there are exceptions. So in this case, clap becomes clapping. Sit becomes sitting, okay? And those are the major spelling changes you need to make. Now let's look at how to give short answers in the present continuous tense. So in English, if someone asks you a question and your basic answer is yes or no, we don't usually just say yes or no. We usually say a little bit more than that. But at the same time, we don't have to repeat everything they asked us in the question in our answer. So what we do is something like this. If someone says, is he working late? You could simply say, yes, he is, or no, he isn't. And how do you know what to say here? You just take it from here, right? So is he? Yes, he is, or no, he isn't. All right. So what's important to notice is that in the positive answer, you cannot use any contraction. You cannot shorten it and say, yes, he's. No, that's wrong. But in the negative, you can definitely use the contraction. You could say, no, he is not. It's not wrong, but usually we'll just use the contraction. It's the same thing here. Are they going to the meeting? So we could say what? Yes, they are or no, they aren't, okay? So you're basically taking your answer clues from the question itself. And again, no contraction possible in the positive answer. Here's another one. Are you studying? So here, it's going to be a little bit different. Why? Because they're asking, are you? And they're, you have to answer with I right? So here you cannot use it, but you will simply say, yes, I am, or no, I'm not. Got it? You can't take it from there, but you can still just give a short answer. You don't have to say, yes, I am studying. No, I am not studying. Just say, yes, I am. No, I'm not. In fact, it's a good thing to just know this phrase, okay? Yes, I am. No, I'm not. So, for example, if I ask you are, you, are you learning the present continuous tense? Yes, I am. Are you making progress in your English? Yes, I am. Are you feeling happy? I hope you're saying, yes, I am. Now, let's practice what you've been learning. So, we have some positive sentences we're going to work with, some negative ones, and some questions. So, first, we'll take a sentence which is in present simple and we're going to change it to present continuous, okay? Number one, I go becomes what? I am going, okay? 
or I'm going. All right? We can also contract it or shorten it. We wait. Let's use the contracted form and turn it into the present continuous form. We wait becomes what? We are waiting, right? We're waiting. We are waiting. We're waiting. Good. They play. Again, let's use the contraction just so you can practice the uh, spelling also, where to put that apostrophe and so on and pay attention to it. They play becomes they are playing. Okay? Very nice. All right. Now we have a sentence which is already in present continuous. What we want to do is to change it to the negative form in present continuous. She's calling. How can we make that negative? There are two ways. She's calling. Make it negative. She's not calling. This is one way. And the other way, she isn't calling, right? That was, those were the two ways that we learned. She is not calling, she isn't calling. All right, very good. We're cooking. Make it negative. First, the easy way. You can always just use the easy way too if you're unsure. We're not cooking. I call this one the easy way because you just need to add not. And it's 100% right. It's not like that one is better than this one. No, everything is equally correct. We're not cooking or what's the other way though? We aren't cooking. Okay? So again, pay attention to the spelling there. Next, number six. I'm reading. Make it negative. What will it become? I'm not reading. And in this case, that's the only form that we can make it negative. All right, now the questions. So right now, it's just a sentence. Let's see how we can make it into a question. They are buying a new car. Make it a question. It's really easy. Got it? Yes. Just move these around. Are they buying a new car? And of course, the first word would be capitalized and the second word will not. She is doing her homework. Make it a question. What is it? The same thing. Is she doing her homework? Good. And if you're writing it again, it would be capital for the first letter and then not capital after that. We are leaving at eight. Make it a question. Same thing. Are we leaving at eight? And of course, at the end of each of these, we would have a question mark if you're writing it down. So, how did you do? Hope everything is going well, and I'm sure it is. Let's look at a little bit more. Now let's look at some common mistakes that are made with the present continuous tense, and you can help me correct them. The first kind of mistake. Sometimes the verb to be is missing. For example, my brother watching the news. So what did that student need to say? What did that person want to say? What's missing? The verb to be. So we have to say, my brother is watching the news. Okay? Remember, we have the subject, the verb to be, and then the verb plus ing. 
Sometimes the same thing can happen, but in a negative sentence. For example, this person wrote, John not helping. How can we correct that? John, the easy way to correct it is to say, John is not helping. Or we can always contract it and say, John's not helping. Okay? Or we can say, John isn't helping. All right. Sometimes the verb to be is missing in a question. Instead of saying, she going, what's wrong there? What should we be saying? We should be saying, is she going? Is she going? Right? Again, we needed that verb to be. We can't have this tense without the verb to be. Right? That's why we looked at it so many times. So make sure that you don't forget it. Next. Sometimes the verb to be is there, but it's incorrect. There's an incorrect form of it being used. For example, this person wrote, Bob and Maria is driving home. That's not right. They have the verb to be, but it's not in the right form. Because Bob and Maria is like they, right? So it should be Bob and Maria are driving home. Okay? And here, this person wrote, he ain't studying. Now, ain't is actually slang. You might hear it a lot in songs or in music or in movies. Okay? But in academic English, in correct grammar, it's not acceptable. So if you're doing an exam or if you're writing a paper for university or if you're trying to impress a client, it's probably not such a good idea to use it. Instead of that, you should use the correct version, which is what? He isn't steady. Okay? That doesn't mean you can never use slang. You can certainly use slang with your friends or casually whenever you want to, but just be aware what is slang and what is not slang. Next. Sometimes the verb, the main verb, not the verb to be, but the verb in the sentence is used incorrectly. For example, this person wrote, she is due her homework. How can we fix that? She is doing. She is doing her homework. And this one wrote, the game is start now. It should be, the game is starting now. Okay? There we go. Good. See, I'm sure you're, you can find these now yourself, right? And that's the way. Now you've learned, you know the rules, you're able to apply the rules, whether you're reading something or whether you're looking at something or whether you're writing it yourself or whether you're speaking. It will come out right. Next. Sometimes mistakes are made in spelling. For example, there are several mistakes here. She's lying, but this should be what? Not L-I-E, L-Y-I-N-G. This was one of those verbs also. She's sitting, but it's consonant, vowel, consonant. So we need to double the last letter, sitting. And here, writing ends with an E, the verb write. So we need to get rid of that E, okay? So be careful of those spelling changes that we talked about. Also, here's a spelling mistake. This person wrote, we're going to the mall. That's what they wanted to say. But what's missing here? The apostrophe. Good. So that goes right here. Okay? Instead of we are, it became we're. We're going to the mall. Okay? Next. Sometimes people forget and they use a stative verb anyway in this tense. And they might say something like, I am needing some water. But can we say that? No. In correct English, you cannot say that because need is one of those stative verbs. So you'd need to change that and just say, I need some water. 
The same here. I'm wanting to visit Hawaii. No. Want is another stated verb, so we just say, I want to visit Hawaii. Okay? And last of all, remember what I told you, what we talked about earlier, that we don't and should not be using this tense to talk about permanent situations. So, for example, somebody asked this person, what does your company do? And he said, we are manufacturing cars. But that's not right because it's not something they do just temporarily. It takes a lot of work and organization to do this work. So, it should be not we are manufacturing cars, but just we manufacture cars. Okay? So, in that case, using the present continuous tense would be incorrect. We just needed there the other present simple tense. So, these are some of the common mistakes and I think you see that once you know the rules, the rules actually make it easier for you. They free you to speak and communicate more correctly. So, we've covered a lot in this class. Let's review now, just one last time. You know this tense when you can make what? A positive sentence, a negative sentence, and a question. For example, David is making coffee. A positive. David is not making coffee. A negative sentence. Is David making coffee? A question. Or to add question words to that, for example, when is David making coffee? Why is David making coffee? And so on. Okay? So, what can you do from here? To practice this tense, try to think of examples in your own life. Talk to yourself as you're going through your day. What are you doing at that moment? I'm waking up. I'm brushing my teeth. I'm taking a shower. I'm having breakfast. There are so many things that you can say as you're walking around. You don't have to say them aloud. You can also say them in your mind. Okay? But try to use the tense that you've learned so well right now. Okay? Now, when you feel that you know this tense, then you can go on to the next lesson in this series because this is a series of the verb tenses. Next, after that, you can also practice a little bit more, if you wish, by taking a quiz on Ingvid. Thanks very much for watching and all the best with your English.